know where to go if the reading is wrong. Fuel delivery is the mechanical side and must be operating. You need to make sure fuel delivery is working. We're going to start off by looking for normal fuel pressure. Compared to normal pressure, low fuel pressure could be caused by a bad regulator, low pump output, dirty fuel filter. But it may only be low at wide open throttle going down the highway. Don't forget that. So what we do here with the engine running, open the valve on your fuel pressure gauge and check for the proper flow under an improved container. Yeah, it's a dirty fuel can, but it's a fuel can. Hey, this is real world testing. Hard specifications of volume are hard to come by. The rule we use for Schrader valve testing is one pint in 30 seconds with high performance vehicles giving us one pint in 15 seconds. That is a good guideline, but it's not a definitive answer. Low volume can be caused by dirty fuel filters and low fuel pump output. Sometimes we really feel more comfortable going better. Fuel pumps amp testing is a more appropriate way of testing to see the condition of the fuel pump itself. It's an alternative to volume testing in our opinion. We're going to start our fuel delivery testing with a low amps probe at the fuel pump. This is the pattern we get on our lab scope when we use it. We're going to talk about it and break it down a little bit so that you better understand where we're coming from. These motors out of the pumps are from fuel pumps where amps testing located and when regular pressure and volume testing missed them. These vehicles had problems at different times that were erratic, didn't always show up, made only showed up at off idle, wide open throttle, low power, uh, different things. Let's talk about the basics of current flow. We look at these as we see wear patterns. Now keep in mind we've got two brushes that are making contact across these commutator segments. That's our electrical contact to the wiring if we have normal power and ground to a fuel pump. And these two connections, one on each side, are normal. And as you can see at the ones we were looking at here, there is no place the two connections would be normal. You can't find two, two segments across from each other that have perfect contact. That dark area looking at there, that's where we aren't making contact. If we aren't making contact correctly, we are not going to have the average current flow we expect to see because we are not getting B plus to the windings. When this happens, the pump loses power. Less power, less volume. But unless we go to the, the good flow test system that costs about $1,000, we check the total output of the pump and we look at gallons per minute. You got to go back, disconnect a line at the filter, measure the flow for fuel flow, that type of thing, we're not going to find this type of problem. So when you get ready to start doing this, you're going to have to use a specific diagram for the vehicle you're working on to figure out where to connect your low current probe. Sometimes just hooking in at quote unquote the fuel pump fuse gives you other things. Uh, in this particular case, the fuel pump fuse looks as if it only goes to the fuel pump. But in a lot of cases, we find it powers ignition, fuel injectors, and other things. So it's safer if we go we know for sure we're measuring just the fuel pump. And that gets to be complicated because sometimes in the engine running, there's ways around the fuel pump relay. In this example, we have a drawing showing us where the two connectors are for battery plus and the, to the fuel pump signal. We're going to connect A3 to B1 on the relay with a jumper wire. This jumper wire can be used then to power up the fuel pump. In this particular case, we don't even have to start and run the engine. This powers up the fuel pump automatically with the engine off. Then we put our low amps probe around it and we can measure the current flow going to the fuel pump. Remember, current flow is directly related to the pump output power. So we can go down here, we can place it at the pump, the gray wire going into the to the fuel tank. That gray wire will give us fuel pump flow. You pick the easiest spot. This relay is in the engine harness block, right side of the engine compartment on this particular vehicle. So it wouldn't be hard to get to in the engine compartment. We'd have to get underneath the car to hook it up out here under the car choice is yours. You find a good location. We're going to look at the average current. Now we're expecting 4 to 8 amps on this vehicle. The A is halfway up a 10 amp scale on this particular lab scope. We're running 
a little above four. We pass, but just barely. We could go up well above the five, up to the second dotted line going across is seven and a half. We could be up to seven and a half on a good vehicle. So we're close to the bottom of the spec. That tells us we're making pretty good contact, not so bad, but the fuel volume is not going to be as good as if we were running 6 amps, which is the middle of the spec. At 6 amps, we'd have more power, we'd have more volume, but not enough to condemn it. If we get below 4, we vary power. Does, do we have good B plus to the pump? Have good ground. If we have good ground and good voltage to the pump, the only reason we're drawing less than 4 amps is those contacts you saw on the commutator are not making good contact with the brushes. You'd need to change the pump. We cannot stress enough how many performance problems this has solved. These are basically the performance problems. Remember, your fuel pressure may look normal, vital, and be wrong out on the test drive. The second thing we're going to look at is the, how good the current flow is as it comes up full square on one of these sets of brushes. Each set of commutators will give us a peak like this. It shouldn't exceed 15% of the average current flow. Then we're going to measure how long it takes eight. If you looked at all of our commutators, we had eight different segments. So as we look at one revolution, we will cover eight segments. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little humps. That's one revolution, and the scope tells us it took 9.12 milliseconds. What we do is we divide 60,000 milliseconds by 9.2, and we find out we're turning over 6,578 times. That's 60,000 milliseconds per minute divided by the 9.2 for one revolution. Dividing it will tell us how many revolutions we will make in 60,000 milliseconds. In this case, 6,578. Now, we have some specs. They're general specs. Current is important. The pumps are, TM, the most important things. If more than one thing isn't correct, you can condemn the pump. The pump's current is below the minimum average. That's very bad. We suspect that as being a bad pump. But we also expect to see it fail at RPM spec a little later. If the difference in the humps are greater than 15%, we've got really big differences. Something is wrong with some of our system. The RPM should be between 3,400 and 10,000. Why 10,000? Sometimes pumps are cavitating and not pumping at all, and this RPM is too high. That simply means they are not moving fuel. They're just spinning. The, the pump is worn out and it's no longer sealing up. So it has no fuel pressure. It's not developing any pressure. Under 34, that's a clear sign. If it's under 3,400 and the current draw is, is bad, it's definitely bad. Replace the pump. We have a lot of shops that say if the pump is bad, if current draw is bad below the spec, they change the pump. That's also valid. Use what you find works for you. One of the things we found when we put shops on the program, testing every car for current draw, is they were selling two to three fuel pumps a month more than they were with their old testing. They're definitely needed. You'll save a customer from getting stranded. It's a very valid test. Solves a lot of performance problems. The other thing we're going to use current flow on is the injector. We're going to use current flow because we find it more accurate than resistance and we can see other factors. We can use voltage. We're going to go in here on the black wire because that black wire on this particular vehicle is the voltage signal. It's the ground supplied by the PCM. The current is on the bottom and both of these are valid testing. Let us show you why. The black wire over there we're pointing to where goes over to our computer. The PCM is going to supply us ground. It's going to let us see how good that driver grounds and ungrounds. On the other side, we're going to be looking at the current flow into the injector. That's going to help identify the amount of current we get and tell us about resistance. So we've got two different things. We're going to go right here. We're going to do our, our voltage measurements. Here's our voltage measurements. We hook up our scope we set it up to look at one scope. We can measure milliseconds at the bottom if we want to. It should be normal B plus when the injector's off. Now it's possible a shorted injector driver will come down to zero. You will find those on occasion. It should be under 0.2 volts, 200 millivolts. Doesn't always get down to real good ground, but higher than 200 millivolts 
We're not getting a good ground. Remember, the PCM supplying this ground, that can be caused by a bad PCM ground. And then the spike, it should be equal of all injectors. Be sure that B plus and ground are normal. If they're not normal, you probably have to replace the injector. In some case, we get bad drivers that can't support the spike. Should return back to B plus again. Current testing is done during the injector's own time. It's the other half of this. We can tell you about injector's resistance and get more data than we can from the voltage spike. We're going to do the same thing. We're going in here. We're going to collect around one or all the injectors, whichever one you want to do. First, we'll just show you one. You could do them all. This is where the injector current turns on. As you see, it's a gentle slope up with a dip about halfway up. This hump indicates the pinnacle opening. All injectors should open at the same position in the waveform. Now, we have seen a lot of people that say it's 75% of the waveform. That's fine if that's what you want to use. But our theory is not all injectors go bad at the same time, so let's use the one that is equal to all of them. The size and definition is determined by how clean the injector is. If the spring gets weaker, it opens further down towards zero. If it gets dirty and doesn't open well, you tend to lose the, the pump. Opening lower, weak spring on the injector which may result in a rich condition. Opening higher indicates dirty or sticking injectors, and this could result in a lean condition. Remember, what we're trying to tell you is every reading you take should give you a diagnostic direction. Lower, you found the answer too rich. Higher, you found dirty, lean. Compare to peak amp. We've got 11.4 to 12.6 ohms. We have seen injectors who read right with an ohm meter and have over 1.2 amps of current flow. We had one that flowed 3 amps, but the ohm meter read 12 ohm. The two do not match up. Get good specs and compare them to specifications. Higher amps are most likely caused by shorted windings in the injector. We have found tons of those. Now once we have verified that this is working good, we have verified the fuel delivery side. These last few things we've been looking at with current ramp testing for fuel pumps and fuel injectors are really important parts of any fuel monitor diagnostic and we would implore you to try to utilize them in your procedures. Now the absolute last step in fuel control testing is to look at the computer timing strategies or the lack of strategy. What we want to do here is we want to see if the timing looks logical. If it looks to where we expect it to be from the data we have for specifications at idle. Does it increase with engine speed? Does it look like normal timing control when we drive the vehicle? Now, some cautions here. If you use a starter button, remote starter button, shut the engine off and restart the engine with the ignition switch before road testing. The PCM on most cars needs to see a start signal to control timing correctly. And when you're looking at the idle, make sure your park neutral switch is working when the engine is cranked because it needs that for controlling time and idle correctly. Once that's done, you got to realize it will not reset if you're using that starter button. Now you're ready to go on your road test and do some road testing, and this should apply to all systems. If you have what looks like illogical, nonsense timing control, and it cannot control strategy, go back and look carefully at the crankshaft position signals. If they're clean and normal, then you probably have a bad PCM. This is the catch-all clause. Use timing and its reaction to timing to see if it looks normal to you. If fuel control looks abnormal, timing looks abnormal, look at crankshaft, look at the PCM to find the solution to your problem.